Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Teresa Roberts and Stephen Tona, who recently published a book on risk modeling aimed at the C-suite. Teresa is the director at SAS. About, uh, she is working on uh, risk modeling and decisioning at SAS. And Stephen is a AI and modeling lead also in SAS, at SAS. And their book considers how technologies driven by machine learning and AI have transformed industries and help evaluate and solve risk management problems. So Teresa, Stefan, thank you for joining us for our risk management show interview today. Welcome. Thank you, Boris. Welcome. Thank you. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. And uh, we, we had already in one interview with Teresa a few, I think, uh, one about more than one year ago, with also with your colleague from United States. And today we will have a discussion about your book, which is uh, titled uh, Risk Modeling, a Practical Application of Artificial Intelligence, Machine Learning and Deep Learning. And uh, we will, of course, put the link to this book in the show notes. So I believe we will have a very thoughtful conversation on uh, what business leaders need to know about uh, the responsible use of AI and ML with some actionable tips. Of course, there is some uh, uh, topic of AI and ML is very trendy now, popular popularized by a quick uh, rise of tools such as uh, ChatGPT and other generative AI tools. So my first question, um, um, there is so much information out there related to AI and NML. So what is it that you both see is missing in terms of um, helping senior managers understand the AI ML in risk management? So Teresa, please go ahead first. Sure. Yes, Boris, you, you're absolutely right. We see in the news and on uh, social media, there's a lot of hype. And the hype is, is accompanied by a healthy dose of fear mongering as well about the use of, of AI and, and machine learning. Now, although these methods are extensively used in all areas of business today, there is hesitation to apply it in higher highly regulated uh, areas such as risk management. Senior managers are rightly concerned about transparency as well as conduct, as well as the regulatory compliance um, of these, these models. So the missing link in the mind of, of the risk manager is how can I and my organization actually benefit from, from AI uh, in dealing with our everyday uh, risk management uh, problems? But, but, and if I can, how can I do that in a way that the AI risks are, are properly managed? So either avoid it or uh, properly mitigate it. Mm -hmm. Stephen, can you add uh, something to this? Yes, yes, no problem. Um, so... We find that senior managers, they also face challenges in fully grasping the, the application of AI and machine learning in risk management. And that's due to the limited availability of practical first-hand information. Um, the senior, senior managers and C-suite really want a more streamlined understanding of AI and machine learning, how to apply it without having to extensively study AI and machine learning principles and in-depth procedures. So our new, our new book really fills this gap by supplying uh, real-world examples and case studies of successful implementations of AI and machine learning directly in risk management. And, and it bridges that divide between the theory and the, uh, the practical application. Mm -hmm. uh, Teresa, I have a question. I, can you please uh, highlight the strengths uh, and weaknesses of AI and ML? and clarify the main misconception perhaps that you have both uh, experienced in your career and your uh, application of uh, these techniques. Sure. Well, the, the, the strengths of, of AI and, and machine learning is, is, is definitely in its speed as well as its automation. Uh, capability. So uh, Stephen highlighted uh, several areas where it can help risk management. And, and to add to that, we saw in, in, in COVID-19, many of, of the traditional risk models breaking down, whereas uh, machine learning, on the other hand, proved uh, quite helpful with the, 
the short-term high-frequency forecasting that, that was needed uh, on transactions. Now, um, in terms of, of, a, of a weakness of the AI, I would say that uh, organizations often underestimate the demand on, on data as well as infrastructure for, uh, for these types of, of models. And there's, um, of course, additional demand also on uh, model validation teams. There are um, increased model risk from the use of, of hyperparameters in, in the models, um, as well as uh, automated feature engineering methods that, that can be employed, and, and that needs to be handled uh, correctly. Mm-hmm. Now, in terms of, of a misconception of, of the AI that, that we often see is um, that AI tend to be less fair than, than human decision making. We hear a lot about bias and, and fairness of, of AI systems, while and, and while that is true, these uh, these models can make uh, bias and unfair decisions, um, absolutely. But there's also a lot organisations can do uh, to de-bias the, the the training data before the the data enters the models or test the models for uh, disparate impacts once once the models are developed. Mm-hmm. I just want sure. to quickly uh, mention yeah. also that. Um, there's also a misconception around that uh, th- th- these models or these advanced models um, using machine learning and AI can totally replace human decision making. Um, we just want to I just want to mention here that um, it's, it's crucial to understand that AI machine learning is more meant to aid, not replace human decision making. Uh, and what's required is more an implementation of a governance and and it, also ethical standards like. Um, AI governance principles, but integrating them in, the, in a flexible and scalable way throughout the model ops process um, that prioritizes operational resilience and um, uh, can, can help more effectively leverage the, the potential of AI and machine learning while minimizing the risks such as the fairness, the bias and the fairness, but also to maximize the, the ability to monetize the opportunities, especially in banking. Mm-hmm. Of course, governance of AI and ML models are very important. So who is, uh, uh, in view of you, responsible and accountable for governing of these models? Yeah, uh, we see that... Oh, no, no, go ahead. Oh, no worries. So we see that um, effective, effective management of um, AI machine learning models will continually, continuously require a human touch. Um, with those in charge responsible for ensuring the proper governance and the ethical considerations that, that they're always in place and continuously, obviously. This involves incorporating, for example, best practices uh, such as uh, AI governance or trustworthy principles into a more uh, throughout the entirety of uh, the model life cycle or model ops. Um, and it can enable the organizations to mitigate the, the, the risks, the inherent risks of the, of, of this, of the model of the model, but also throughout the, uh, the, the data as well. Mm. Sorry, Teresa. Yes, yes, well, that's shall I, shall I add to uh, add a little bit to that? So so we can't bring um, the AI, of course, before a jury to have it explain um, its actions. At least we, we can't do that uh, just just yet right but uh, but like human uh, decision making the ai operates within within a certain business context and and what we see organizations do in terms of of governance is um, extend their existing model risk management frameworks as as well as their data governance uh, frameworks for for the ai that allows the, the business units then to execute against that that governance standard that that is in place mm-hmm. So is there uh, some uh, observation from your side how, uh, uh, or perhaps can you explain how uh, these models, uh, AI and machine learning can be effectively applied to everyday risk management practices and problems? Well, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, one of our customers have a, a sophisticated income estimation a model that, that utilizes a, a neural network. Um, it uses hundreds of, of 
input variables, including, uh, including trended uh, attributes um, as well. And this gives uh, this customer uh, more than 15% improvement in the accuracy um, of the model of, of the incumbent. Now, what is more is that, that this model also gives uh, the, the customer wider coverage of, of the population of the model uh, of the that that gets scored by the model because non-traditional data for uh, thin file customers are, are used. Now we also see um, machine learning um, especially being used in model validation functions to to challenge the status quo and see if if better models um, cannot be uh, be built. And then a, a very exciting area, especially for us in, in uh, risk, is a synthetic data generation. You, you mentioned uh, ChatGTP, which is a, a generative AI, but, but even in, in the structured uh, data domain, we see um, uh, AI and machine learning can lend a hand to, to, to simulate data that we can uh, assess the impacts of, of events that we might not have historical data for. Just another quick example. Um, there was one large lending uh, institution that we work with as well, and um, they started to use machine learning to build uh, uh, to build off historical data, which wasn't it didn't have a coverage of two to five years. It, it was built over uh, a, a two to three month period using more granular transaction data. Um, and that helped to better identify customers that were, um, that had, for example, income shocks during uh, a COVID-19 relief program. Um, so that, that was another quite innovative way of applying uh, machine learning, especially during the pandemic. Yeah, I believe that if this uh, guys from, uh, uh, what is the last bank that, uh, 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 crashed uh, last week uh, uh, Silicon Valley Bank uh, Silicon applied Valley. Uh, yeah. applied your <laughs> techniques it might be to could survive but uh, I read that it had some uh, other risk management issue like uh, no hedging uh, bond portfolio and so on so maybe they need to apply uh, better techniques but anyway uh, you know another question uh, okay. another question I will have uh, how, uh, based on uh, what we know about this uh, failure and the probably uh, unbalancing of um, uh, financial system right now, how should uh, firms approach uh, balancing business benefit uh, with the newer risk uh, created by using uh, of uh, AIML models? There is a plus. Uh, I want to make a comment uh, about the um, Silicon Valley yeah. Valley Bank. Yes, of course. What 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 was needed there is is some forward looking um, modeling. So uh, the the expectation we we need to be ready for for several scenarios, right? We can't just assume that interest rates will will stay flat uh, forever. So so having forward looking models that uh, simulate different uh, interest rates would. Would may have uh, picked up on on the issue, and perhaps I could could have addressed that um, addressed that sooner. But I'll I'll let um, Stephen comment on on the risk return uh, trade off. Just really quickly, I saw someone online used uh, Chat GTP actually to to produce some uh, analytic output from the the balance sheet of SBB, and uh, it was quite very well done actually. <laughs> Spoke to what you just said, Teresa. Um, so how, how can firms approach balancing the business benefit? Um, just want to mention here that, um, that the balancing needs to be done in the context of the business benefit, but also the risk of, of the AI and machine learning. Um, and that can be done by, um, for example, adopting a more risk aware strategy and a framework, um, a framework, for example, one for AI governance or trustworthy AI. Um, but to incorporate it in a flexible enough way that it can seamlessly embed throughout the model life cycle um, for, all, for all the AI and machine learning initiatives, not just one. Um, and this requires an understanding um, of the risks that are involved um, and, to, and a systemic approach to, to manage them um, day to day, really. This can include, for example, uh, governance, governance and ethics and explainability um, into the AI machine learning models, 
um, and, and the, the overall process, performing ongoing risk assessments and impl implementing um, risk mitigation strategies. Mm. I have a question about um, uh, what are regulators expecting from uh, companies uh, using this uh, AI ML models? Uh, uh, what are uh, decision in they expecting from uh, from uh, management? So maybe if you have some example from uh, leading banks or uh, institution on best practices and how to deliver this uh, uh, programs. Yeah, just want to mention here that. As you mentioned, I mean, the regulators, they're, they're becoming increasingly aware of the potential benefits, but also the risks that are associated with, with the models, with the AI machine learning models, but in particular in risk management. Um, they're expecting firms to not only understand the technology um, and its limitations, but also to have a robust enough governance framework in place to ensure that the the AI machine learning models are used in a way that is as, tran as transparent as possible, are explainable, um, and can meet ongoing ethical considerations. Um, the leading banks that we work with, they've been able to, to start um, the best practices, such as integrating AI machine learning into their overall risk management strategies and conducting regular audits of their models. Um, but, uh, we, we're continuously finding that the op more operational resilience will still be required around the, the model life cycle or model ops um, to more effectively mitigate the risks over time and to monetize the, the full potential of AI machine learning. Sorry, Teresa, did you want to? Yes, well, I'll, I'll just add to, to that, that, that sure. yes, um, regulating AI is, is a new area for, for everyone for a long time, the, the innovation of, of AI has um, outpaced uh, the regulation. So what we see uh, globally, uh, broadly, there's consensus from, from regulators that, um, as, as Stephen also mentioned, accountability, explainability bias, these will, um, will need to be addressed. And then what we also see um, organizations do is, is they invest in um, algorithmic audits as well as uh, impact assessments um, of their models. And, and other um, organizations are starting to employ a um, chief AI ethics officer that has a board rep representation to, to ensure that uh, the, uh, the AI governance framework is consist consistently applied right across uh, different uh, business units. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I just want to add there that um, that will enable, also enable a more proactive approach to keeping up with um, all the industry developments and the evolving regulatory expectations by um, regularly, regu regularly reviewing the governance framework and seeking out help when it's needed from a third party validator, for example, where it's necessary. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are closing our, uh, we have about, uh, I think, five, 10 minutes, maybe another few questions. So what are the typical barriers to adoption of this program you see in the market? Uh... Yes, yeah, so, so the, the typical barriers are um, explainability and, and bias, like, like we've mentioned. Um, explainability is not only about the mechanics, um, of the model, which which can which needs um, explaining, but but also the model development process itself that that can become um, opaque with 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 AI. But I think a, a, a more general uh, barrier to adoption is uh, the scarcity of of talent. That uh, is is a is a global uh, challenge faced by by institutions, and then having that that right infrastructure. Uh, in place to ensure that quality data goes goes into the models, uh, but also the the right infrastructure to deploy the the models more more effectively. Yeah, I'll just add to that a bit as well. I mean, that there's also there's chief concerns around the the data, the data privacy in particular, um, and uh, but we find that having the right strategies in place, um, that, that all the barriers can can be overcome. Um, allowing organizations to reap the, the benefit of AI machine learning in, uh, in, in risk management. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> if we summarize it, if someone who is listening to this episode would, would like to walk away with one or two major takeaways, what would that be from each of your prospection? Teresa, please go ahead first. Yes, yeah, so, so I think the uh, a key takeaway would be that 
it's still early days for the application of AI and machine learning in, in risk management. We are only now scratching the, the surface, but, but some of these, these applications like the conversational AI that, that everybody is, is chatting about, uh, these generative uh, natural language processes, some of these technologies behind the, the AI are impressive. And, and what we might see is that some of these natural language explanations will also make its way into our uh, sophisticated risk models um, right but if if we if we think about it uh, practically if we use these models practically we we must understand both their their strengths and and limitations because they can also uh, cause serious damage if if the ai um, goes wrong um just want to mention that uh so just some key takeaways from my end is um, AI machine learning, uh, the opportunities are, are vast and they're rapidly rapidly evolving, as we know. Um, for example, from improved data analysis that to, to uncover complex non-linear patterns in the data, enhancing decision-making with more accurate predictions, risk prediction, for example, credit risk predictions. And um, AI machine learning, it's at the point now where it's poised to revolutionize the way we approach risk management um, with the ability to process the, the substantial amounts of, of alternative data, which we have access to, for example, unstructured data and net, even network information. Um, AI machine learning can provide a, a deeper and more comprehensive view of, uh, of the risk factors. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That's were all my questions. If I forgot to make perhaps uh, something to ask you that you think important to, to deliver to our audience, please, uh, please go ahead. Just want to mention that um, uh, with, any, with any output, uh, any model output, it, 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 it always requires human oversight, um, human, human checking, and uh, we've believe that will continue to be the case. Um, there'll always be a, a, a need to override a model or a model output when, when it's necessary um, to, to ensure that the model is behaving in the way it was designed to. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It was a very insightful interview. Uh, Teresa, Stefan, I uh, wish you a great uh, evening. It's in Australia, it's already evening, right? <laughs> and uh, was it's just the beginning of the day. So I, 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 of course, we will uh, put the link uh, to your uh, book so people will have opportunity to read it and uh, to ask more questions. And uh, hopefully we can uh, speak uh, in some other interview with more, maybe on a specific topic. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Boris. Great talking Thank to you. you.